There will be an increase next year. Labour's confirmed that the council taxes will be kept at a 5% rise. So that's around about 100 quid for the average family bills. It does get more expensive depending on where you live and what your band is. The rise would be three times above the current rate of inflation. So that's a little kind of... Um, context in terms of what this means in, in cost of living terms and the like. Let's meet with Shimian Lee, researcher at Taxpayers Alliance. Shimian, good afternoon to you. Thank you for having me, Ian. It's a pleasure. And of course, no taxes on working people. Um, that was the promise. Uh, but of course, this doesn't come under the trio of taxes that Labour kept wheeling out, VAT, national insurance, ta blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it is working people. It is a tax rise and it is happening. You're absolutely right there. This is just another broken promise by this Labour government. Uh, in the local government elections last year, Labour actually said that unlike the Conservatives, they would have frozen council tax and they said that there was the money to do so. But now that they're actually in power, they're singing a very different tune. If council taxes go up by 5% again next year, this will be the third year in a row that council taxes have gone up by 5% and that's just going to hit um, households hardest. Um, the fact of the matter is that the amount of council tax has actually risen by about three times, nearly three times since the turn of the century. Yeah. And that's going to hit working families, that's going to hit households, households that are already less likely to see a pay increase this year because of policies yep. in the Labour budget. And it, it, it kind of gets a bit of a free reign, doesn't it, council tax, in terms of analysing where it goes. I know a huge chunk of it does go into social care and we all, you know, who doesn't want to help other people, etc. And we all have an understanding that it, this is a very desperate area. But, well, you know, it, it's sold basically on the premise that council tax is for your local services. And if people are looking around them thinking, well, I'm not getting loads of local services. In fact, the ones I did get are being either reduced or cut. So it becomes very hard to quantify. It's almost as if councils don't even have have to really explain why they're doing it because here's this tax it's mandatory you can't swerve it you've got to pay it end of story so we, we, we tend to give it a bit of a free pass when it comes to debate about this particular tax that's correct and that's actually the precisely the problem that the um, referendum cap was uh, supposed to solve. The principle of the referendum cap is that if councils want to raise their council tax by more than 5%, they're going to have to justify to people and explain to people why council taxes have to increase and actually win a referendum on that topic in order to be able to uh, increase the council tax. Now, the local government association has actually called on the government to allow them to have unlimited increases in council tax without a referendum. And we really have to wonder why is it that local councils are so afraid of a referendum? If they really believe that they're spending mm. taxpayer money wisely and that there's a need for a tax increase, they should fight that referendum and demonstrate to people that they are spending money, money wisely and they should win that referendum. Yeah. But if not, then people will rightly ask, why is it that you're asking for such a massive increase in council tax? That's a very good point. When I first started doing this job, or soon after I started doing this job, uh, a load of years ago, Shimmy, and somebody said to me, some of the best stories uh, are not actually uh, ones that come from Westminster or Holyrood, from the, the, the central governments. They're actually buried in local government. You know, read the town hall stories, have a look at the treasury report from your local authority because there's some real juicy morsels of tales of woe and wastage tucked away on a weekly basis, but it gets left alone. And I thought that's a really good point, isn't it? Council tax and the issue of local services really doesn't go, I mean, once in a while we have a moan about it, like we are now, uh, but we don't really expose some of the horrendous things that councils spend money on and some of the dubious schemes and weird events and crazy bits of artwork and paving and stuff that they like to, you know, to, to splash out on. It, it, again, it gets a bit of a free pass, but there's a ton of stories there. Well, we at the Taxpayers Alliance are laser focused on... Um... Indeed and what's going on in local government. In fact, just last week, we were on the ground in Wolverhampton protesting a £30,000 increase in the um, chief executive of that council's pay. They nice. were proposing to increase uh, the chief executive's pay by £30,000 in just one year. That's more than what a lot of people will earn in the entire year, a lot of Correct. residents will earn in an entire year. And that's something that's absolutely unjustifiable. And we do a big paper every year called the Town Hall Rich List that looks at the number of um, officers and officials in town halls that earn more than £100,000 a year. And this year, I'm afraid to say, it's another record-breaking paper that showed over 3,000 uh, town hall bosses um, wow. earning over £100,000. What did the, uh, the, the, the person that ran Wolverhampton Council, how did the justification work on that, by the way? If you could well, the way, 
the way a lot of these things work is they compare themselves to other councils uh, who have also got these massive pay rises. So right. if that pay rise... Well, that's not through, a good measure, is it, really? Absolutely. <laughs> If that's, that pay rise had gone through, he'd be on more than £200,000 a year. That's a massive amount. More yeah. than the Prime Minister, more than Sue Gray was earning, um, for just to be the head of a local council. Yeah, that, that is insane. Listen, Simeon, thank you for your time. Really appreciate that. Simeon Lee uh, from the Taxpayers' Alliance.